Uh, mommy, you know I'm a nut. That's why I should have wait. Wow. Your uh, bulb was dead. So Thank you. I borrowed from Philip. Wow. This place was a mess with all the stuff you bought me. Yeah. <laughs> now you have a prince bed. Oh. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy. Boy, I really feel like a little prince. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Thank you. You have ability to be one. Thank you, mommy. And I thought I would, it was going to be in another segment that I would ask you this, but now that it's Thanksgiving night, you know, you know what I want to do. But I've been, I've been taking care of your business with such pleasure. I wanted to show off. <laughs> yeah, I want to impress you. And I love it. So, mommy, now, you know, me and these guys yeah. have a war going on. I didn't... War always going on. Okay. I want to ask you something. Between the guys, between the families, unfortunately, between loved ones. And this is very sad. Yeah, but... Nobody can hurt you more than loved one. Mommy, I love the people in Congress and meets his office so much. I love Dada Smith. It kept me away from you. I ain't come yet. Whenever I, I had something nice, I'd bring it. If I couldn't see you, I'd leave it. If you call me, I'm right there. I but I had All to... It was for me. But Mommy, I had to fight. I had to fight for the integrity of my of the inheritance from my mother to me by federal law. I had to fight for that. And come to f and, and that was because I saved that old lady's life and exposed the money that was stolen, that was covered up. And then it came, these, these guys created so many crimes. They went around the law in so many ways. And then come to find out if it wasn't for Jason Hilliard. I would have never suspected the congressman's office. In order for me to start investigating them instead of them, instead of me thinking they were my friends. And Ida Smith, damn, she was good, mommy. Mommy, she almost convinced me that she was so good for me and that if... can kill you this love. And that's what the f heck she did. And the love that she had wasn't for me. The love she had was for the protection of her boss. That's the love. Betrayed. I was betrayed. But I believe in her innocence. I don't think she never thought it would get this far. She never thought I'd discover. In other words, she was a bottle and I was the genie that was put in it by her being the bottle that was able to suck the fumes of my mind, my thoughts, my ideas that I put on paper and put in her hands. She worked, even, even, even a friend of mine, the guy that did her office, her partner, told Dr. Fries, you do anything with that guy, we ain't doing business with you. Even Ida Smith told me that that guy they, see, they hooked him up. Him, they call him doctor. And me, they call me a piece of shit. <laughs> so now I have to go for my doctors. <laughs> Mommy, you've been an RN for 45 years. You, you're bigger than any little doctor coming out of medical school. So what I'm thinking is... I save a lot of lives. You know, getting your I'm proud of this. get get up. I gave a lot of love and care for people who was having sunset in life in their life. And and what happened to my mother? You know how I would freaking kill. And in that dry harbor nursing home, you know they were trying to get me to do. Why would people? Anyway, I'm not going to talk bad about. Go back there. 
I, I let it go. And it's been five and a half years since my mother died. And you've given me a new life. And she did used to give me away to a whole bunch of women. <laughs> she gave me to her sister. Then her sisters. Then to Mrs. Lohenberg, Elizabeth Lohenberg. Then I got her. I was 25 years old. Yeah. When I actually began to know and get to know and love and live with my mother and be, be within reach that I could see her anytime. Although I wasn't, you know, I didn't live in New York City. And anyway, I was, after I met you and complained to you about them no good pieces of crap, how they was treating my mother and taunting me and doing things that should have made me run up and hit somebody or do something inappropriate. That's the same kind of crap these little colored dudes did to me, mommy. I'm a French guy. I love everybody. I get, you see how I get along with everybody. You do. <laughs> but these guys... You can control your temper. This is what I learned to. Oh yes, I can. Yes. And I have a very bad one. But these guys, they're ruling by a black law. I discovered something. I discovered something that is in the fabric of the African American community that unless I was black like them and didn't and went in there and lived as one of them and studied them for a living, especially having my behavioral science background, my psych background, my marketing background, my legal background, my education, my anthropology education, all those educations led me to actually they're, they're still slaves. They're still slaves, right? We're immigrants. We, we might have a different skin color, but we're not, we're not like them. And the chances of the likelihood of people like us coming here, even whether you're rich or poor. But we have our morals. Yes, principles. that's the key. And we cannot live by American uh, principles. principles. Yes. That's why I created Moral. the world, the appellate court of good morals and ethics. You see, and these people can't seem to understand because there's some of them to me like, how do I live with white people? They sure don't live like you. I've lived like you. I've, I've, been, I've been with their women, lived in their houses, raised their kids. And I don't have anything against them. I mean, I love being in my life. I was doing good, being good, because God gifted me with so much. Ice and fire. And these guys, they're a bunch of slavers. So guess what I'm going to do to them? I'm going to buy them, mommy. I'm going to buy them through an index number to bring their butt cheeks to court vi by vi vicariously by their attorney because they won't have the guts to freaking show up, them freaking punk cowards, to face me and look at me in the eye and say, Dreyse, you're wrong. No, I'm not. I got you. Got you good, and right now it's Thanksgiving. We are celebrating the harvest of my past five years to seven years of work from the time I started my activism for Mrs. Funny Green. This is this is a happy Thanksgiving. So what I'm going to do in order to keep this on this one tape, because I still got up to 15 minutes on this. I'm going to run downstairs and introduce the rest of the family to my fans and the people that really can love me. They really do. Because I protected them black people too and there's a lot of black people behind me. And that's part of the jealousy of these guys. So many people like me. <laughs> I'm more popular than the elected officials. And if I was an American citizen, I could make a run for their seats even at the congressional level. That. Yeah, I told you you should be a congressman. Mommy, I don't want to become an American citizen. Why not? Because I would be betraying the longest bloodline of free black men on this planet. Obama is a free black man because his mother was white, his father was from Africa, not having the slave legacy and lineage of the slave breeding big Negro, big Watusi, Mandingo, Miss Superfield Negro people. And when and their women, their women are the men. The yeah, women are the men, and the men are weak. They got big bodies. They can go fight in Vietnam, they go, but they're ruled by women. They're not like. They have no brain. It's been abstracted to what is called the Willie Lynch chip. 
They're very smart, intelligent, give me all those things, but as far as the brain. So what I'm going to do to these guys, mommy, I'm going, Dr. Philip Edward Dratch is about to give you, let me do this with my mama. It's like Obama was doing it with his mother. I am about to give you an injection, all of you. I'm talking about Congressman Gregory W. Minx, Shirley L. Hunt, the New York State Senator, New York State Senator Malcolm A. Smith, Assemblywoman Vivian Cook, and Councilman Leroy Comrie, along with their friends, they're all the same, it's not about your luck, color, it's your position, which is Dominic Rafter, that newspaper reporter, and Brian Rafferty. Guess what I'm going to do to you guys? I'm going to give you all an injection, and that's the nurse right there, 45 years RN. I'm going to give you an injection that will expand your mind to a point where it will never, ever, ever go back to its original smaller size. You understand that? And so guess what I got to say to you? And I can't do this in front of my mother because I respect my mother. All I've got to say to you is BANG! That's what I'm talking about. There's a double dose of it. You know why? Because you need a double dose to get it through into your brain. Because I got to take care of your body and have enough to get to your brain. Because I got to expand it. Because it's been attracted to the Willie Lynch chip. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to make you free at the end of that. See, that's the reward. From what I'm going to take you to, it's like almost like when I went to escape and evasion training when I was in the 1st Regiment Battalion, 75th Infantry at Fort Stewart, Georgia in 1975. I'm going to teach you a lesson you guys have never seen before. Ask Adam Smith what I did to New York City Housing Authority that you guys kept contained. I'm about to do the same thing to you. And you've been harvested, and now all of you are represented as turkeys on my table. Okay? Now, look out. Woo! You're not going to cut them, you're going to rip them off. Yes, mommy, and guess what? As they are dissected on paper, I promise to harvest the butt cheeks, the big Watusi Mandingo mixed. Super field Negro butt cheeks. You know they have great looking butt cheeks. We're going to get their butt cheeks. The rectum will be attached. The descending colon. The traverse colon. The stomach cavity. <laughs> the ascending colon. Attached will be their esophagus. I got to do that, mommy. I got to do that. Because they disrespected me. They acted as if my culture was inferior to theirs, mommy. And they're giving a bad example to yeah. them. They're giving. Huh? They're giving a bad example to your people. You guys are not leaders. You guys are slavers. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do to you. What you what you've destined for your people to be enslaved under you. Now I'm going to make you defendants under me. By vicarious liability, you will become my indentured servant. Because I'm going to sue each and every single one of you for at least a million dollars. And the newspaper, uh, ten million dollars. And Tom Credit, you ain't got no money. Don't you remember me? I'm the guy that used to work for ten bucks an hour. Come and clean your goddamn toilet. Showing you where to take your clothes to get washed. Where to take them for your white shirts to be white. To be pressed. For you to look like a real corporate executive. You're my student. Now you graduate. Free. Free. You're free. Because what you were teaching me, I don't want to learn. How to keep my mouth shut, stay good down and under, and give it up to these guys. Those are your boys, Tom Crater. Those are your boys. You're a newspaper editor and publisher. You're the one that, so, that told me about Detective Bernie Porter. Come on, man. Come on, man. To the district attorney's office. Come on. All I know is, I thank everybody. It's time for Thanksgiving. It's a little bit too freaking proud for me to show you on my freaking table on my plate. Why? Next year you'll probably come here trying to rob me. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? Bang! That's what I'm talking about. Bang! A double dose of what you like. Bang! Three strikes, you're up, buddy. Bang! Get out of here. Ciao.